Well, I think it's already beginning to pick up uh, momentum, uh, as you know, as a lot have been agreeing earlier. Um, but I'd like to notice that the gyrations have been actually uh, bigger than usual. We've seen, uh, you know, the index rise. Uh, I think you know, close to 170 points during President Duterte's inauguration, and then we saw profit taking. There was also a reversal, also with the Brexit. We were up 80 points, and then we succumbed to you know to to negative territory where we were down 100 points. But overall, it's still been uh, rather bullish at this point. Uh, what I would advise investors is, if you think at a particular day, especially during intraday trading. If it rises more than the usual, I think you should maybe take some profit off the table, at least just for trading. Oh, right now, we've reached 7,800 level. How do you see the PSE moving for, the, for this week and for the rest of the year? Well, if you just base it on technical indicators, it's still, or, or the, all the readings are, are rather bullish right now. Your 20-day moving average is around 7,650. That's where we peg our support as of now. Um, 7,800 seems to be establishing as a firmer support level. Uh, we think we might be testing it, but there is a lot of resistance at the 8,000 level, so probably you're going to see a lot of movement towards 8,000, and then later on there's going to be some profit taking afterwards. Now, how would your strategy be different in, in the second half as compared to the first half, especially given the change in administration? Well, um, I think right now everyone is trying to position in. You know, we have a new administration. Um, you know, everyone wants to hear the platform. Um, I think there's specific focus areas which the president uh, wants to, uh, you know, wants to pay attention during the first 100 days. So probably look at those sectors, of course. There are others that are going to be, uh, you know, uh, specific uh, pockets where, you know, they're going to be uh, sustainable growth, you know, especially consumer and retail. Now, when we talk about consumer and retail, what particular stocks are you watching? What do you what what are looking attractive right now? Well, we still like uh, RHI. Uh, we released a, a buy recommendation of stock. We still are holding our target price because we want to see the effect of the election spending uh, when the second quarter earnings come out in August. Um, a lot of people don't find it as attractive right now, but we you say you know you should take that with a grain of salt. They're not heavy on expansion mode. In fact, they're only targeting around one to three malls uh, per year. But, you know, they've already grown heavily in the past uh, three to four years. So right now, they're all about margin improvement. In fact, 45% of their capex right now is going to be allocated into the supermarkets. Now, how about GD Capital? You're also watching that. Do you agree with the shift from power to infrastructure? You think that's a good move? Well, um, you know, it, it's, it's nice to see a company refocus uh, on its core businesses and I think you know they want to go into property because you know um, uh, what is uh, you know they, they their core company is banking and usually property and banking go together um, as far as stock prices are concerned um, if you look at the power business uh, usually if you if you value it it's usually at around 15 times PE um, and this is because you know it's a very steady company when you grow a power company usually it takes two to three years to put up a plant right uh, not the same case for property because it's per project and second thing you base it on the nav so if you look at a, a property company usually it's going to be priced double 30 sometimes 40 times so as far as stock price valuation is concerned it's going to make the company more attractive now talking about some sectors that you know the third administration will be looking at we talk about online gaming now that's always expected to take a hit after what he said that he wants these companies to stop what's going to be the outlook for them like phil webb for example well, you know, the first thing I would have to say is that we should be used to the president, you know, releasing all these heavy-hearted words, right? Uh, you know, he said a lot of things in the past, and you know, he he seems to sort of massage it afterwards. Now, um, I would think that probably there might be a way around this. He did say that he wants to stop the proliferation of gaming, and I think the reason he said this is because um, it it's more of, it doesn't even contribute to the government. There's no taxes, but that you can collect from it. And you know this is this is software, so I think it would be easier and more automated at this point to collect. You've seen what you know what's happened with Apple. They you know they pay a royalty for for their iTunes. Probably they could also you know make amends and probably uh, allocate or make a program and where, where they can actually collect taxes. So if this is the case, I think it's going to be more attractive for the government and probably they might just keep. So it. you're saying it's, you're saying it's not yet the end all and be yes, all. There for could them. still be a win-win situation in All this. right. Thank you so much, Luis.